This burbling stream is the headwaters of the Indus River, called the Sengahe or the Lion River by Tibetans. Here at over 16,000 feet, the Sengahe drains the north side of sacred Mount Kailash and is also the source of three other major Asian rivers, the Brahmaputra, the Ganges, and the Sutlej. At long last, paddles pulled through the sparkling waters of the Sengahe into the exquisite desolation that lies within the rain shadow of the Gangdes mountain range, an area so dry at this time of year that entire villages are often left abandoned as Tibetan herders move on to higher country in order to graze their herds. The remote Dratke Monastery sits nestled in the hills far above the Sengahe. Arriving quietly in colorful duckies, dry suits, and helmets, two young riders were visibly startled by what we presume they may have reasonably considered to be extraterrestrials. The monastery's young head monk led the way inside the sanctuary with a group of curious students in tow. <laughs> Her balloon guy. This was a great stop and one where lots of bulky goods were offloaded. <laughs> On previous trips through Tibet, penny candies were handed out at stops along the way with the ugly result that people nearly rioted. <laughs> Since then, school supplies are the preferred gift. Maps, pens, pencils, paper, coloring books, small musical instruments, as well as toys for the kids at the monasteries and villages that we visit. <laughs> These, along with the ever-popular Polaroid print, are always well-received and are far less likely to cause tooth decay. <laughs> The remainder of the day was spent exploring the monastery compound, while the monks chanted and the younger boys studied their lessons. Well, sort of. Later that afternoon, hot yak butter tea and holy sampa were graciously served up in the original centuries-old monastery structure that now serves as the monk's residence. Stayed about one year in here. <laughs> this is a real pearl, yeah. you know, the yak butter. At the market, it's not real. But they have yeah. mixed with something else. Yeah. But this is a pearl yak butter. Because these are all nomads. They don't go shopping here? 
They don't go to the uh, market? Uh, maybe once a year, like programming. One day it can be 140, 140 kilometers. So we just jump out in 19 miles. Coffee ready. Inside, nice, yeah, tea and warm stuff. Before shoving off, some of Jokje's monks and even the skittish riders paid a visit to get a closer look at the duckies and also help with breaking camp. <laughs> Time for one last all-important photo op, and then, with a brisk following wind, it was time to leave. One morning, the driver spotted our camp and roared in with news that one of the countless dams being built by the Chinese was just a few miles downstream. Pete suggested ending the Sangahe descent here and floating the Rakasangpo River near Sung Song instead. <laughs> let's go. 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 It would take three very long days of driving to make it from the Sangahe takeout above the dam to the town of Sangsang, over some of the highest road passes on earth. 
The first night of this epic little road trip ended in the tourist mecca of Goethe. The Goethe Resort provided pitchers for drawing wash water from large plastic vats at the hallway's end, but still required patrons to craft in the courtyard out back. With a haggard cast of frontier hookers and their chain-smoking clientele, doing a raucous business behind paper-thin walls and curtained doorways, it's a lively spot on the weekends. Well, don't the ladies get the best? <laughs> The lake is 45, 45. Passing through high desert plateau, the second night outbound to the Rock of Sang Tho ended in the town of Tochen, where a Tibetan rodeo was underway. This annual festival draws family groups of nomadic herders for three days of horse racing, food, traditional dancing, and lots of fashionable flirting. But they, but they broke it into small groups. Is it okay? Yeah. <laughs> 